Good afternoon and welcome to the Zero Project Conference 2022. We are broadcasting live here from the UN uh, headquarters here in Vienna. And uh, this afternoon I have the pleasure to talk to Juan Jaime Pardo. Good afternoon, Jaime. How are you? Uh, good, thank you. <laughs> You're thank working you. for the Office of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights. Uh, please, for the audience who doesn't know the, uh, the organization, two minutes of introduction. Thank you. Yeah, just keeping it very short. Uh, thank you for for inviting us. Uh, I'm working as part of the Human Rights and Disability Unit of the Office of the High Commissioner of Human Rights, uh, which is a, a part of the UN. Uh, led at this moment by the High Commissioner, Monsieur Bachelet, uh, and uh, working on everything related to human rights, particularly uh, based here in Geneva, in Switzerland. What are the commitments proposed uh, for the way forward? Could you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, well, <clears throat> We're, we're talking uh, about the commitments uh, made uh, during the Global Disability Summit. That is a process, a very long process, um, where organizations of persons with disabilities and different stakeholders um, and actors uh, will make commitments to improve and progress and advance in the rights of persons with disabilities. Uh, in uh, compatibility with the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities and the uh, Sustainable uh, Development Goals. So this year, the Global Disability Summit had um, five thematic areas for commitments. I'm not going to go through all of them, uh, but uh, we do want to highlight the high interest that we saw and, and uh, a good number of commitments on community inclusion uh, and and it's community inclusion as a cross-cutting theme that connects uh, uh, the right to work and being uh, financially independent, access to health, uh, education. So it's actually being able to, to have the living conditions uh, to be a full member of the community and participate actively. Thank you. Uh, the Global Disability Summit, uh, for the ones who do not know, uh, was held last last week. So it's very recent, uh, the information what we get here. What was the reaction of the of the stakeholders? How did the communities, NGOs react to it? Well, um, from the, from the co-chair's uh, summary, uh, that is already available. We can tell that uh, that participants were really interested in 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 an increased effort to strengthen community inclusion uh, by providing disability inclusive uh, social protection um, and and community based based services that that really uh, connect and and serve uh, persons with disabilities. Uh, including um, uh, technology, assistive technology, and, and other kinds of supports, and and eliminating barriers to economic empowerment, as I said before. So I uh, we identified a, a, um, a high interest in that, and also um, a very strong interest and commitment for organizations of persons with disabilities. Uh, to be included uh, throughout uh, the process uh, in that uh, these processes should be uh, working in a participatory manner um, following uh, the, the leave no one behind uh, sort of motto um, that should, yeah, that, that should um, work throughout uh, this process, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Jaime, why, why are these commitments so, so important? Well, uh, we uh, to, to be uh, completely clear here, the commitments, all of the commitments haven't been processed yet. The, 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 the secretariat uh, of, of the summit is processing the, all the commitments right now. Um, 
but uh, the issue, uh, it, what, what it's really important for us, to us at the at the office of the High Commissioner, is that the issue of community inclusion was raised uh, by multiple stakeholders. And for us, it's key to have a very broad base of stakeholders, including states, cities and local governments, uh, UN entities, organizations of persons with disabilities and, and, and other organizations from civil society in general, um, service providers uh, and donors. And, and when we get um, the, the final um, systematizing or processing of those commitments uh, that, uh, I mean, you can go in the, in the Global Disability Summit web page and, and check the one from previous um, summits. Uh, but when we get the, the, um, the final mapping, uh, it, will, it will give us a very good idea of who to work with and and we we stand ready to support this work and act uh, collaboratively and uh, create uh, or or support networks um, to work uh, on community inclusion thank you Juan Jaime uh, so basically you, you got um, let's say an international uh, agreement and uh, and commitment on certain issues you want to to push forward uh, in the in the future how how does the process work? I mean, this uh, this sounds all uh, very abstract to let's say for people with disabilities uh, on on the ground. So, how, what is the way forward? Indeed, I think as as I said before, the um, I think this is uh, all the interest shown by by uh, a very uh, diverse range of stakeholders shows that this is the moment to to start uh, building coalitions and to start um, sharing um, good ideas and, and practices and initiatives. Um, so consolidating all the work that uh, is already being uh, done in community inclusion and then trying to uh, make that good work um, reach uh, uh, further. Um, so we're really looking forward to to start working, for instance, with uh, networks of uh, or a group uh, groups of states that are interested in in advancing uh, public policy. In particular, uh, we're very interested in working with service providers uh, and donors who are interested in, in financing this kind of uh, programs. And at this point, the, the Human Rights Council, that is uh, one of the mechanisms of the of the UN, is uh, just about to start negotiating a resolution that will uh, mandate us, the Office of the High Commissioner of Human Rights, to work on this issue for two years. Uh, and if uh, this happens, that, that we're very optimistic that it will, um, we will have to uh, work with different stakeholders in, in, in framing the conversation first. So, so defining what community inclusion is, how, uh, uh, how does it look like, and then uh, like for persons with disabilities and, um, and then uh, doing a report on, uh, on good practices. Uh, and I think this is um, something in uh, which uh, zero project can can help us uh, a lot with all the experience that you've had uh, throughout the years. So we really encourage your project to support uh, the collection of good practices on on social protection and support uh, to households with members with disabilities, community based network development um, for supporting persons with disabilities, assistive technologies, transportation initiatives, uh, housing, legal capacity, and uh, prevention of institutionalization, amongst others. Uh, as I said, community inclusion is a very cross-cutting um, theme or issue that, that um, people are seeing as being able to capture uh, the, the real <clears throat> living conditions needed to be part of society. Um, and also, uh, I think this is a, a great moment just to encourage the Zero Project community and practitioners um, to support the building of a global coalition um, in relation to what I said before, to support and deliver concrete solutions 
in community inclusion. So we know that um, a lot of the zero project community has experience uh, and very good experience in, in programs related to community inclusion. And we want to bring that experience together and sort of make interact the different uh, points or factors for community inclusion to uh, to move this forward effectively. Thank you, Juan. Uh, as you know, the topic of this year is accessibility. We work in a, in a cycle of four years on the four main topics uh, of the convention, so accessibility, uh, education, employment, and independent living and political participation. Next year, it will be independent living, so we are more than happy uh, to include your uh, your input, our call for nominations will go out in uh, in, in in late spring, and uh, just map uh, a roadmap for us uh, how we could collaborate and uh, and integrate uh, the arguments you just mentioned. Yes, definitely, and I think both uh, this year's and also uh, next year's. Uh, topics are all very relevant uh, to community inclusion. Uh, actually, uh, I see a, a very big overlap with uh, what was being discussed in the Global Disability Summit this year and uh, and and everything that you're bringing this year um, at the Zero Project. And, and I think that's a great bridge to what's coming uh, next year. And, and definitely independent living, but also <clears throat> accessibility, transportation, housing, uh, work, education are, are really uh, pillars um, to, to community inclusion, as I said. So, so we're very happy to, to start seeing and, uh, all the connections uh, and, and really putting together all the efforts that are already being made uh, in in sharing good practices and and the the conversations on how to um, improve um, public policy and and social programs. Thank you, Juan. We're more than happy happy to do that. We definitely will will keep in touch uh, later later this year. At this point, I want to thank you for your contribution. It was very great to get insight uh, into into such a high political level, which has big. Uh, opportunities and also uh, big chances for persons with disabilities. Thank you for your participation. Thank you for tuning in. We are broadcasting live here from the Zero Project Conference 2022. Thank you and stay with us. Thank you for the invitation and, and of course following everything happening in the Zero Project. <laughs>